fairly common question students have is what do I have to get on this or that test in order to get a particular grade in the class? And we can answer this question in a couple different ways in this Excel spreadsheet. Uh, one way, of course, is just to play with it and enter a bunch of grades in for quarter test three and final exam uh, and see what you come out with. But a more efficient way if you know how to use it is the solver add-in uh, that we're gonna, I'm going to demonstrate here. So start out with uh, you should have your table showing grades so far. Here I'm assuming the student has done all the assignments and um, quizzes and has gotten perfect score for that. Got 20 out of 25 on the quarter test one and 22 out of 30 on quarter test uh, two. Uh, obviously yours are going to be somewhat different um, and of course grade is failing right there but it's only because it's assuming these empty cells are zeros um, so the first thing to do with the solver add-in is you need to actually add it to the program we don't have to download anything it actually comes with Excel it's kind of strange that it comes in with Excel but it's not actually installed we have to go to the add-in menu, well, just as we did with Chi-Square. It should be listed somewhere here. There it is right there. Click on Go and check next to Solver Add-in. Press OK. It'll take a few seconds and you'll actually know that it's added in if you go to the Data menu and you see Solver over here on the right. And it says, What If Analysis? Uh, tool that finds the optimal value, blah blah blah. Uh, the key phrase, what if analysis, right? So, what if I get a grade of this on the quarter test? What would happen to my overall grade? Or we're actually going reverse, we're saying, what if I want a minimum grade of 75%, 85%, whatever? What do I have to get on quarter test three in the final exam? Now, before entering solver, I want to do one thing. Um, and that that will help us in the solving process in terms of making some assumptions um, usually people's grades tend to sort of hover around a certain value um, it's kind of unusual that somebody would completely flunk one test and then ace the next one happens but um, it tend to fluctuate fluctuate around an average so in order to make this realistic we're going to put an assumption into this solver that the grades on these last two tests aren't going to be that different from each other. And in order to do that, what we need to do is calculate the difference between this grade and that grade. Um, and I'm going to just do that here in cell D11, and an equals sign, and I'm going to subtract um, D6, or rather D7 from D6. You'll see that, that we're going to add that into the solver later. So I'm just getting a, a difference there. And actually, I'm going to add it one additional thing to this difference. I'm going to put parentheses around it. And I'm going to put ABS next to it, which stands for absolute value. Basically, what I'm doing here is I'm saying the absolute value um, of this difference is going to be calculated here, absolute values. If you remember from math, it's simply the uh, distance from zero. So any negative signs get um, taken away. And that's obviously going to be zero for now. But these numbers are going to change because it's a what if analysis, and so Excel is going to start entering in values in here um, to give us the grade that we might want. Okay. So I come up here to the solver, and it gives me this dialog box. Um, let's just focus for for now on the set objective, okay? And here it, it has the the address for that objective um, already. It's already entered a lot of this stuff in here. I'm going to actually delete all this stuff so I can show it to you step by step. Because when you open your solver not going to have all that in there. 
Um, so we'll start with the set objective. The objective is the final grade. So what we're going to do is, in order to select it, we're going to click here on this little red arrow. And I'm going to select E8. The reason there does do the dollar signs indicate that it's just not going to change. It's not that important here, but it's basically cell L, uh, E8, which refers to the final grade, final class grade. That's the objective, and you know your your the address of your cell might be different. That's not the address of the cell is not important. What's important is that it's you're highlighting the final class grade. And instead of, you know, of course, we want to maximize that grade rather than minimize it. But let's say, you know, of course, if we maximize the grade, right? So let's say if let's try that, let's see what happens here. We say max, maximize the grade. The next thing we want to do is identify the changing variable cells. These are the, the cells that we don't know, basically. And in this case, there's two things we don't know. We don't know the quarter test three and the final exam. So press that little red arrow and highlight these two cells here. They show up. And that little colon in the middle there just means it's like a dash from B6 to B7. OK, and now before pressing solve, I just want to note the solving method I would select simplex LP. I'm not going to get into what that means. Now, what do you think is going to happen when we press solve here? Well, if you're going to maximize the grade, maximize the grade, you're going to get the perfect score on quarter test three in the final exam, right? Um, one thing we're forgetting, though, Excel has no idea that you can only get a 30 on quarter test three and a 50 on the final exam. So we actually have to tell it that. Um, and I can add these constraints here. So we're going to basically say on the quarter test three, you can only get a, up to 30. Final exam, you can only get up to 50. And we might actually want to be realistic and say, well, you can get a perfect score, but sometimes careless mistake or some problem, you might lose a few points, even at the best, in the, even in the best circumstances. So when we add these constraints, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this red arrow, highlight quarter test three, the cell that will contain that raw score. And I'm going to say instead of 30, which is the technical maximum, I'm going to say 28. That would be you know, maybe just one, one or two errors. But this is a very good score. I'm going to add that. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to the raw score for the final exam, B7 less than or equal to. Again, I'm going to leave, leave a, a little leeway there for some errors to be more realistic, say 48. I'm going to add that in. And now when I'm done, I'm actually press cancel. And it takes me back to the solve parameters dialog box. And now I'm ready to solve. Now, you can probably guess the answer of what's going to happen here. Um, if we have a top grade and I press solve, Okay, now it just throws numbers in here. Well, of course, it threw in the, the highest numbers we had allowed it to give. We said the highest for quarter test three was 28, highest for the final exam was 48. Okay, that we sort of realistically thought was possible, and that ended up with a grade of 91 percent. Now we wouldn't have needed solver to do that because we could have entered these numbers in ourselves, right? Um, but let's try solver to do something that might take a little bit more playing around with the numbers if we didn't have the solver. Instead of maximizing it, of course we could minimize it, um, which would be, of course defeat the purpose um, and of course would, would give us zeros. But just as an exercise in understanding what's going on here, if I say minimum I press solve, of course it's going to give me zeros, the minimum grade. Now, you can always click on return to solver parameters dialog to go back, or you can just click on the solver again. We're now going to get to the what we really want to do here, 
and that's what use the value of box here. What we're doing is, you know, sometimes the student will say, well, um, in order to get a B, what do I have to get on these next tests? So let's try that. Let's say if it's a B, say it's an 85%, so 0.85 there. So what we're doing is we're saying here that the total grade for the class, uh, we're aiming for a minimum of a B, okay? And we already can keep these constraints here. Let's just say, okay, realistically, you might get a few questions wrong on both the tests. So we're leaving these constraints. And you want to have some sort of constraint in there. Otherwise, you know, these could be end up being negative numbers. Um, now, it actually has this box checked saying that they're non-negative. Non but these numbers could go higher than 30 and 50. And then it wouldn't make any sense at all. We want to add an additional constraint here. And that is related to the difference between the two scores. OK? Because if I just... Um, let's just press solve here and see what happens. Okay, I'm getting 28 and 36. If I get 28 and 36, that would give me 85%. If I solve again, it should give you the same same numbers. Okay, but look here, there's that. What it's telling me here is that one way to get an 85% is I get essentially perf almost perfect grade on quarter test 3, you're 93%. And then I do much worse on the final exam. There's a 20 percentage point difference here. And as I said before, I think we can kind of predict with our performance that it's not going to vary that wild wildly. Um, I guess unless people are drinking during certain periods of the semester and not during others. But usually you got scores that are about not equal to each other, but they fluctuate around some average, and they don't just wildly go up and down. So one way to make this a little bit more realistic is to put another constraint here. I'm going to add another constraint. In this case, I'm going to add this difference cell. And I'm going to say, OK, can it be more different than, say, 15%? the two grades, uh, the final, uh, the quarter test three and final exam. It makes it more realistic. Um, whatever those grades are, they're not going to be wildly divergent. So I add that and cancel. It goes back to the solver parameters here. So I've got the three constraints. And now when I press solve here again, now notice that the numbers that it gives me did slightly worse on quarter test three and somewhat better on the final exam, like that. Okay, so now it's it's giving you these grades are then going to translate into a final grade of 85%, like that. Um, now let's say we can change the the minimum score we're aiming for. Someone was aiming for C, or say let's say a C minus say around 72 percent C minus grade and we could click solve and now it gives us the number of points we'd have to get quarter test 3 in the final exam of course there are other solutions you could do better in the quarter test 3 and worse on the final exam but this is just one solution uh, to this problem and then if you had the goal of just passing it's not a great goal, but say it's just a passing score, 65%. We're going to do the same thing. And Excel gives us you know, what we would need, uh, one, one scenario, to pass the test, uh, to pass the class. And so hopefully this makes sense to you. The solver add-in is um, one of the more complicated, sophisticated things that Excel can do. Um, it can be used for all kinds of things. You know, companies can use it to think about their pricing, about uh, in terms of how, how do you price something in order to make the most profit. So obviously, when you're when you're pricing something, a higher price uh, means well, there's more profit per unit sold, but fewer units are actually sold. So 
becomes an issue of what the price should be to make the most profit. Um, that's a little bit more complicated problem than this, which is basically just under a set of constraints. That is, say, some realistic constraints on how well somebody can do on a test. What kind of grade um, can they get? Or the reverse way to say, okay, if I'm aiming for a threshold or a particular grade, minimum grade of whatever, um, what would I have to do on the quarter test three in the final exam? And you should be able to use this um, now and then in the future when you get the quarter test three, and then you can just use it again for the final exam.